my goodness. Hello, little mice. What are you doing? Okay, ready? We're gonna let him out. Ah! <laughs> go, buddy, go! <laughs> Will you put that in to the chicken space? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, flower friends. So I'm outside, and oh, Axel just opened the chickens. And here they are, they're all finding the only piece of grass that we have exposed. There's um, my little my little greenhouse that I have. It's not much, but that's how I um, harden off my seedlings in the spring. There they are. Hello, lovies. I have some more goodies for you. I have some, some new scratch in the car that I gotta get out for them. Um, I like to give them some scratch in addition to the regular food that I have for them. But I'm making my way over to my bird feeder because it's kind of been quiet for a few weeks now. And then a little while ago, I saw a woodpecker and three chickadees. <laughs> so I thought I better replace, well, not replace, but put a suet cake out there because I'm trudging through the snow because there's none here. Here it is. So my suet cake. Oh God, I can't reach. Oh God, okay, I got it. So I have to put the suet cake in here. Oh my gosh, it's not a very flattering angle, but I am kneeling in the snow, opening up my suet cake. And this is a high energy suet cake, which is typically uh, woodpeckers and stuff like that. So there they are, gonna hang it back up. I'm wearing my Buffalo Bills pajama pants. Go Bills! So in the opening of um, this video right here, I showed you there were two mice <laughs> in my chicken food. And um, that's because the top on this one container does not shut well. So if you guys are dealing with that, I have something that might work for you. Hold on. So this is my corner where we keep um, the food. And as you can see, <laughs> a mouse got into one of the bags the other day while it was sitting here waiting to be put in here. This is an old, garbage can it doesn't shut all the way the mice get into that one. this one however I picked up a tractor supply for maybe $20 it holds an entire bag but it has that it locks it into place I never have mice get into this one so that uh, I think I need to replace this one with another one of those but we just haven't gotten to the store to do that yet anyway so this is fantastic you just put it down open it up and then it locks just like that in just a few seconds. Yay! Hello! All right, let's do this. Ready? Okay, ready? Banana. Mekaleka high. One musketeer. Two musketeer. Three musketeer. That's Debbie. Are you Raven? No, not Raven. That's Hawkeye. Raven. Chaz. That's hey, 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 hey. Over here we have Asher, Coco Chanel, and everyone's favorite chicken. It's Frizzle Frazzle. Hi, Frizzle Frazzle. Look at all that poop everywhere. That's the one thing about chickens, guys. There's poop everywhere. Oh my gosh, I so forgot. My most beautiful, this is Bunny. Hi, Bunny. Hi, Bunny. She lays green eggs. It's cold out. I mean, it's not that cold out. I think it's 30 degrees, but still it's a little cold out. Anyway, let's go in the basement because I have exciting news about my Lysianthus. Okay, so we're down in the basement and there's a little bit going on, a lot more than was going on last time we were down here together. So I do have all 21 varieties of my Lysianthus. They are on the heat mat underneath my grow light. And I have several grow light setups down here, but this one is the expensive grow light that I don't think is necessary, but I'd already purchased it a few years ago, so I'm not gonna let it go to waste. So that's hanging above my seed starting station where the where the heat mats are, et cetera, et cetera. I have a link to all of that stuff down below. So I have started 21 varieties of Lysianthus two weeks ago today. It's not true. Two weeks ago tomorrow. <laughs> so today is day 13, yeah, so day 13. So I started these on January 2nd. 
all 21 varieties have germination. Some more than others because it's still very early yet. The back of the seed packet says 14 to 21 days for germination on Lysianthus. But all 21 of my varieties have some sort of life. Some of them, it looks like they all came up. There's like 70 little babies in my little tray. And the way that I did this, I'll post a, a link to the video above, but uh, the way that I did this was on, on trays. So I put my seed germination soil, which is my Lambert, this is where it's called Lambert GPS. It stands for germination plugs and seedlings. So this has really fine, uh, really fine perlite and it's just a very fine material. It doesn't compete with the seeds in any way. So I used that on a tray and I sprinkled the seeds over top of that. And then I lightly did vermiculite on top and then I put plastic over the top of them for a little humidity dome. And the reason that I did that is because I didn't have enough space on my heat mats to start all 21 varieties in these 200 plug trays, which is what I will be bumping them up to. The other reason that I did that, I explained in the video, is that I didn't wanna have a whole bunch of empty holes in my plug trays, wasting space underneath my grow lights when I take them off the heat mat and onto my stations. So, a couple of reasons for that. Last year I did soil blocks, which I, I don't think that that's a bad thing to do, but for me, uh, they they kind of outgrew the soil blocks and these 200 plug trays have more than double the root space for them to grow. So I'm trying this out, seeing how this works for me. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, most people don't cover them with vermiculite. You don't have to do that. They do require light to germinate, but clearly I found as my testing right here, that they find their way and they germinated no problem. The vermiculite did not cause an issue for them whatsoever. If you're curious about the varieties of Lysianthus I started that's in that video that I posted the link to earlier as well. I'm really excited. Lysianthus, the Roseanne Deep Brown was my favorite flower this past year. Laura from Garden Answer started it as well. Uh, I think this week in her video, I was so excited to see that she was growing it as well. It's literally my favorite. Um, so it, she only was growing two varieties. One was Roseanne Deep Brown. So yay for Roseanne Brown. It's some people don't like it because it's it's an antique dirty looking flower. It doesn't look like, um, you know, a, a bright pink or a white. It has a very unique, almost, it looks like a dried flower almost, and it's very much not dry. So I really, really, really love it. Uh, it just had this romantic vibe. Enough about that. So I do want to mention though, I had been misting with my glass cobalt blue delicious mister which i still love but i mentioned in the video that some people were using those misters that you just hold and it was misting and one of my viewers she's also a member of this channel thank you so much rose sent me one in the mail let me get it so this is a one and a half liter mister it has a nozzle where you can change the intensity of the mist you can actually even make it jet stream which you don't want to do to these lysianthus but this i don't even know the company that makes it rose sent it to me the box must be upstairs. I'll put it in the link down below if I can find it. So this is a pump. You pump it until you feel the pressure. It doesn't take long. And then, I'll do it here. A light mist, it's marvelous. So thank you, Rose. This is amazing. Uh, this is, is coming handy. Now I'm not misting these every day. Because I'm using the humidity covers, I think I've only misted them twice since I started them 13 days ago. And that's because the plastic wrap on top maybe has a little hole along the edge and the air gets in there and it dries out a little bit more than I'd like. So I've only misted them twice in 13 days. So they're doing fantastic and I'd like to try to get some close-up shots, but um, my camera is not like a macro camera and these are tiny, tiny babies. So I'll do the best that I can. In other news, we also have the eucalyptus growing down here, which I'm super excited about. I started the eucalyptus and three survivors from my original batch because let me repeat, Brad Pitt fried them with my grow light. And so I have three survivors that were on this tray and they were started I started this eucalyptus on December 4th. They were on this tray. Only three made it. This tray I'm going to wash and reuse it in a couple of weeks when I start some more seeds. So all of these foam trays that I use, they're former meat trays. I use them for seasons and seasons and seasons and seasons. So these are the three babies. I potted them up 
to school milk cartons. That is what I potted them up and they're doing quite well in there. They're about an inch and a half tall. This one has like, it's growing its fourth set of leaves. I don't know if it's gonna show you if it's gonna focus on this baby, but it's growing its fourth set of leaves in there. Uh, this one is working on its third set of leaves, beautiful. And then I started a second tray of, of eucalyptus because I had uh, 40 leftover seeds, 41 seeds left over. So these are doing really well. I don't want to tip it too much because I don't want them to um, fall off my tray here, but they're all nice and beautiful. They're soft. I think I got, mm, I don't know, most of them germinated. I think I have six or seven empty spaces. And these are old seed. So these were seed from, uh, I bought them in 2019, used them in 2020, using them again in 2021, and I got really over 70% germination. So we're good there. Now, today is my first Fertilizer Friday. That's what I call it. So Fertilizer Friday is a way that I use to remember that every Friday I have to fertilize my seedlings. And the fertilizer that I use, this is leftover from last year. It was out in <laughs> the rain and the elements for a little bit. So the, the label is losing some of its color. But this is Neptune's Organic fish emulsion and seaweed mixture. And this is what I used for all of my fertilizing last year. So I have a gallon of water. And if you read the instructions on the back for seedlings, you're only supposed to use one teaspoon of this into one gallon of water. Now, when they get older and you put them outside, you can increase that dosage. I believe it says one tablespoon for a gallon. Uh, that's for house plants. So when they're older and they're, they're outside, you can use one eighth of a cup or one fluid ounce per gallon for your vegetables, for your flowers, flowers, trees, shrubs, uh, all that stuff every one or two weeks. And this is this could be uh, feeding the soil. It's also a foliar feed. So if you spray your actual plants, the leaves will soak up the nutrients from this fertilizer. It's called a foliar feed. Okay, so I'm going to, I, I'm missing the top to this milk cart. Just a warning, it smells like death. I have to prepare myself. I might have to get a mask. <laughs> I'm gagging already. I don't gag though. I really don't. It's comfy. Ah! Okay. Nope. 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 This teaspoon will never see food again. That is strictly my fertilizer. <laughs> Okay, I lost the top to this. Ah, oh, there's some on this one. This is this is flower power. This is um, I'm probably gonna dump this out. It's from it's from last season. That is the Crystal flower food in that gallon jug. You have to label it, otherwise you get confused over what's what. Okay, so I'm gonna put this. It doesn't really fit perfectly. It's a different brand of milk. I'm putting it on there. I'm just gonna shake it up. Okay, give it a little bit. There you go. Give it a little bit. Yay! Okay, so these three are gonna go back underneath the lights. And then for this tray, I do bottom water on the trays and I'm just gonna water it like I would any other day and just give it a little bit of, doesn't take much. And you just have to watch it to make sure all of the liquid is absorbed into the soil blocks. And if there's a lot of water left over, go ahead and dump it out. If it's soaked up, soaked up too quickly and it doesn't look like it's wet, then put a little more in. That appears like it was a, a kind of the perfect amount. There's a little bit of water left. I'm gonna check on this in a couple of minutes. I think that's gonna do it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys an update on the Lysianthus. So it's about a two week update. All the babies are up. They're doing fantastic. Now the hard part begins. Germination, that's not a struggle. Keeping these babies alive for the next three months before I put them into the ground, 
that's the hard part. So much can happen over the course of the next 12 to 14 weeks before I get them into the ground. I mean, they can have damping off, they can have uh, fungal issues, they can dry out if I'm not watching them, they can become too moist and, and have issues, and there's so many things that can go wrong, which is why Lysianthus is considered one of the most difficult flowers to grow from seed. It's not impossible, and some people don't have any issues with it whatsoever. Perhaps their growing conditions are super favorable for Lysianthus. I have a dry basement. This, there's not a lot of humidity down here. My dahlias are dried out, my, uh, but my corms, my gladiolus corms, they seem to be holding up. So fingers crossed for that. Maybe eventually I would like to put some sort of a humidifier down here in order to keep my things a, a little bit healthier. I'm, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to successfully store dahlias until I get some sort of a cooler. And speaking of cooler, you guys had uh, recommended I'm, I'm gonna say at least 40 of you commented on my mistakes video where I said I needed a cooler, recommending that I look into a cool bot. Well, a cool bot's something that I have considered over the past year and a half or so, and it just isn't an ideal thing for me to have in my situation because the only two locations where I could have a cool bot is down here in the basement or upstairs in my spare bedroom. And that would involve me carrying buckets of flowers up stairs, like a lot of stairs. Like I'd have to come up the front porch, up those stairs, which no big deal. Then I'd have to go take these buckets into the house and then take them upstairs and into the spare bedroom. It just doesn't, um, I, it just doesn't sound fun to me. Carrying buckets of, of flowers up and down stairs um, sounds very um, pain in the butt. So I don't think that that's gonna work for me. That's why I just want some sort of a cooler in the garage. But long-term goals, when Brad and I build our like little warehouse that we're hoping to put up in the next year or two, then we will plan on turning a space inside there into a cooler using a cool bot, absolutely. I've seen so many people have success with those. Ian and Serena just bought a trailer that they're gonna be using to turn into a cooler. Fantastic idea, but that we definitely have long-term plans of using that for sure. So thank you guys for all of your suggestions. And there were so like dozens of you were recommending a cool bot. So thank you so much. We do, we do, uh, we have been looking into it and we do plan on using one in the future, just not this year. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about are some videos that are coming your way. Super excited. I sat down and had a chat with Dr. Alan Armitage the other day. He's got a lot to share, so I have that video coming your way this weekend. I also wanna start talking about the vegetables that I have planned for Flower Hill Farm. I'm a huge veggie grower. I haven't talked a lot about that on this channel. I really wanna start incorporating my vegetables into my flower videos, so uh, I'll be sharing with you guys the plan that I have for a seedling sale coming up and also what vegetables I plan to grow personally for me and there's a lot of them so I'm very excited about that I'll try to figure out where I'm gonna put vegetables though where shall they go that's another video I want to talk to you guys about is how I plan where things are gonna be going on my farm and I just have to figure that out first but I will be sharing with you guys when I do so hopefully I'll see you guys a lot this weekend thank you so much for watching see ya am I recording <laughs>